Kia ora and welcome to this week's episode of the Mina Amso show and the podcast. So glad that you're joining in. You know, okay, so imagine you're traveling and you're eating lots of things and you do this for a job. <sighs> what? Okay, Lebanese-born uh, vlogger. He, this this man, okay, he is your go-to guide if you are in an exotic uh, city and you're wandering around and you're thinking, I'm hungry, where do I go? What do I eat? Okay, something is delicious. I can smell something, but I don't know how to get there. Well, think no more because this man, his name is Antir Hayel, and he is your absolute go-to guide to all things Arabic, especially Arabic Lebanese. He's, though, eaten Arabic, English, French, American, and everything else in between. And this is his hobby. He just does that for a living. Um, well, maybe I'm wrong. We'll find out. But Anthony has traveled to so many different countries, including Lebanon and Iraq and Canada. And he's just really amplified the the Lebanese culture and many other cultures and just promoted these um, delicious cuisines to the whole world and so amazing in fact he has won an award for doing what he does one motto for him though is no garlic no onion and everything else is fine but you know what how about we just get him in there and then we'll just talk to him straight away Antonet Hayel welcome to the Mina I'm so show thank you thank you thank you I'm so honored and pleased to be with you tonight and um, thanks for having me <laughs> Well, we are all been waiting for this for quite a long time and people on this, people who follow this this podcast have been waiting as well. And there, there are lots of people who really appreciate what you do in New Zealand who are Iraqi and I'm sure there's lots of Lebanese here who are really loving this. So this is a great treat for us and I appreciate your time. I know that you, yeah, do lots of things. Um, People know you as the man who's gone to Lebanon, who shows off the Manaish and Lebne with Kibbe, and you just make people drool as you eat. <laughs> we all get hungry just watching you do this. First thing is first, how do you stay in shape eating all of this food? It's a very hard work, I have to let, to let you know the truth. People uh, would probably say he's, he's traveling, he's having fun, he's eating, he's meeting people. Yes, of course. It's a super pleasant, passionate job I love, if I can call it a job, but at the end, I only sleep a couple of hours. So uh, waking up every morning very early, uh, oh. filming, meeting people, mm. at least 50 to 60 people per person per day, and then ending my days with three hours of editing, and this is, uh, this is, this is hard, work, hard work. And then um, eating is, is an art. It's not about eating, it's about choosing what to eat, how to eat it, mm. know what it's good for you what's not good for you and most importantly is know when to stop <laughs> do you know how to stop <laughs> definitely it's very important because i need to be hungry during uh, all day now yeah. let's give an example today uh, i've had three breakfast one ice cream uh two lunch well i've had nice fish and chips and uh, foyer uh, and then uh, i'm having a very big party for dinner so what made you do this? It's the love of uh, it's love of people to to start with, but most importantly, it's showing Lebanon and the Arab world as not seen on TV. If mm -hmm. you look on the news, you'll see Lebanon as a torn apart country. If you look on the news, you would say, "What would take me to Iraq?" If you take the news, you would say, "Definitely, there are a million places better than visiting Jordan," mm -hmm. uh, to name a few. So um, I wanted to be the traveler that speaks uh, Arabic slash Lebanese slash probably Jordanian, Iraqi, and so on. Yeah. I wanted to be the person who speaks your language mm -hmm. and can travel the world meeting success stories all across. And this is how uh, it all started. And today, it's not about the travels, but more of what did you learn? What can you learn? Yeah, exactly. Who did I meet? Mm -hmm. uh, what, what, did, what happened during my day? And... Uh, it has been ongoing for the last 10 years. 10 years. Wow. I was going to say, how long have you been doing this? Um, and you've been to so many places in the world. You've been to Baghdad not too long ago. So what was it like for you? Tell us about Baghdad because our audience are Baghdadis from Iraq. So what was it like? Generous people, happy people, loving country. 
great people probably living in a country that doesn't didn't have much chance i would say if i put yes. it into between brackets the same way our lebanon is uh, i met people who support who give super generous and serve amazing food that is the nafas i always talk about the passion behind things happening mm. it's vibrant full of life uh i've been there 21 times 21 days already and uh, wow. hopefully coming back uh, in january uh, as i promised all iraqis and i hope to be up to, to uh, my the expectations and keep my promise yeah. i'll be visiting all of iraq starting by baghdad yeah. and will never will not stop until i cover it all up um i have so many questions but firstly what was your highlight like where would you want to go back and again and again and eat what did you enjoy the most the two why well, i say two more the amazing things would be kebab 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 um uh, 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 meat at uh, abu dawood Mm. To name a few, so uh, the quality of meat is phenomenal. The quality of lamb, the quality of fat, yeah. the quality of shawarma, uh, samoon. This is why I called my show Samoon Zatar. Yeah. And um, I'll be, I'll, I'll come back again whenever the plane lands. I tell everybody, take me, take me there. Take, I, I want to eat a kebab. I want to enjoy a nice shawarma. Mm. Um, mm. It, it, it's it's a country or a, a city, let's say, since yeah. I only discovered Baghdad full of life if you know where to look and how to look if one if one go it depends on your expectations so leave your high standards away and just say i'm going to meet the people and go down on the streets walk the streets uh-huh. walk the markets meet people interact with them and uh, you'll you'll come back impressed and did you feel safe? Was it that you feel okay there? Um, I was watching your episodes and by the way I um, we'll be showing people some of your clips, if that's okay, um, some of the snippets. So um, hopefully we'll play a snippet in the next now or maybe later on. شيبي جنة شيبي جنة العالم 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 ترويع ترويع شرعية حبيته كتير Barmi sawa? Eat man ushil, eat man ushil, eat man ushil. Ye dille. Your, your greatest weapon is your smile. Your greatest, greatest weapon is your smile. So mm. you smile, you keep it fun, you keep it happy, you let them feel that you, you're, you're coming to live with them. Yes, mm. you will feel safe. You come up with, um, uh, wow, what's this, what's that? And then coming mm. to judge, um, I'm not sure how yeah. much they will like it. On a more serious note, on a more political yeah. note, it is safe. Army is everywhere. Safety mm-hmm. is everywhere. I'm, I'm, I'm not. We're, we're used to that. Because also East. you've like Lebanon as well. There's Lebanon too. I mean, the where, what other Arabic countries have you been to? Uh, I've been to the Emirates. I've been to mm-hmm. Jordan, Iraq, uh, Egypt, Lebanon. Uh, Qatar <clears throat> for now. 
Dirt gear, considered <laughs> yeah. part of it. How do you? That's what it. What's the one word that you describe when you go back to your home country, at Lebanon? Of love, it just feels good. It mm -hmm. feels. Uh, I I consider Lebanon as being the most beautiful country on earth, with all due respect mm -hmm. to everyone else. Uh, and I cherish it. I enjoy it. I love it. Uh, feels safe. Feels mm -hmm. home. Feels home. Uh, we have expats all across. There are people living abroad all across the world, away from their countries. Wherever you are, you, you might have a passport, a small piece yeah. of paper, but you won't feel better than yeah. going back home and uh, feeling loved. I do not have another passport. I'm not saying anything. I'm yeah. talking about all all yeah. of you and them. Um, but for me, Lebanon That's... is uh, is uh, is mine. <laughs> Tell, talk to me about the food because that's your thing, right? Um, you've been to so many places in Lebanon. I have been to Lebanon myself once and it was too short, two weeks. Um, what If people want to go to Lebanon now, where, they sh where should they go? And tell us about the food that you experienced. Food in Lebanon is the greatest yeah. honor, <laughs> to make it short. Food in Lebanon, <laughs> food in Lebanon, taste yes. food. Uh, what you call organic food is simply Lebanon's food. When you, what you call natural food is by all means Lebanon's food. Uh, when you bite a into a cucumber, you would feel something you have never experienced in your life. When you eat a tomato, you would understand what a mm. tomato feels like. Um, Lebanon is a country where you have more than 200 different plates of meza on a single table when you have more than 200 different plates of food or kinds of food mm. prepared at home it's a country of the four seasons 300 days of sun and this is reflected in mm. the food the food um, is grown naturally all across the villages beautiful vegetables beautiful fruits great animals um, that that breathe the wind mm. of the mediterranean uh, that enjoy the mountain rides up to 3000 mm. meter elevation so Lebanon is something great with an education that has been ongoing for the last 7,000 years, history for the last 7,000 years, adapted and upgraded and uh, taught by or of different cultures that came across. Uh, we learned from all the, the people who, who traveled across Lebanon for hundreds of years, uh, occupations, I would call, uh, and this upgraded our culture of food without downgraded it. It's a culture of finesse, of class, of simplicity, of generosity, of life, of uh, love, of colors, and most importantly, of, of passion, of hands, of women, uh, of giving. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm sure I ex expressed yeah. and explained what Lebanon's food is, is all about. So yeah. where to go in Lebanon? Everywhere. Just take the car and the car will drive you around. Just take the car, go to the villages, just yeah. take the car. And, and the car will just drive you around. Stop by any place and you'll enjoy good food. Stop by any bakery and you'll, you'll enjoy good manoche. Just go stop by any restaurant and you will be guaranteed uh, uh, enjoyment. It's not too hard yeah. to enjoy Lebanon. The land of generosity. Uh, and what's your favorite dish? Like your Le like go-to Lebanese thing that you dream of having when you are about to go back to Lebanon? It is actually rice and uh, ground beef with, covered with chicken or cooked mm. in chicken stock. This actually is, is one of. Uh, what my words that in English? Is it like uh, Korean? Style? Rice, mi rice and minced meat uh, cooked together in the water of the cooked chicken, yeah. and then that chicken will uh, be spread along mm. the rice. So it's rice on chicken, so it's actually, but the way we serve it is rice, uh, mm. chicken on rice. So I'm yeah. not sure who called it's it. It's like this almost like a biryani, Iraqi biryani equivalent. But you have maybe like different spices in the in Lebanon. You must have different ways of flavoring this dish. Is it or like do you? What? what why do you love it so much? Why do you love this dish so much? The rice of Reza Jej is not a uh, rizm falfal. It's not a rice that uh, where every single piece goes all, all across. It's not the base mm. is not rice. It's how you cook the rice, how the rice sticks together, how much fat mm. there is in, how you can marinate or mix all together the meat and the chicken combined into that dish. It's the Lebanese seven spices. Is um, it's uh, 
the aromas that go go out uh, to yes. to the nose. So it's um, a rich plate that can take or preparation that can take up to three hours of, of cooking. This is why it's different. It's not food to fill up the stomach. It's not just rice. It's a uh, it's it's uh, a journey of the five mm. senses. I love that the journey to the five senses. Um, how have you seen the Lebanese people? The latest the last time that you've been like obviously they've gone through so much um covid and war and um the big massive explosion how how is their morale excellent great lebanon is great mm -hmm. people are great we're rebuilding our country we're used to it and uh mm -hmm. we're good about it all is amazing and uh, ongoing and whoever wants to visit Lebanon, we're waiting. We're waiting for you. So it's pretty much, you know, open to the world. It's ready to receive everybody. Is it? Always, ever. As I said, Lebanon is mm. is, is, uh, is one of the oldest countries on earth, and uh, Biblos yeah. is the oldest inhabited city mm. in the world. Uh, so we we've been used to ups and downs and great mm. roller coasters uh, along the way. The news doesn't give us justice. This is why I started uh, anyway um so we welcome everyone. like because um the, you you know like you you travel around the world really but you do you have like how does it work you're traveling all the time do you do you have a job like how does this work traveling and going to places you know it must cost you so much how, how does the behind the scene no garlic no onion functions i started my life as a uh, dental surgeon so I uh, I worked as a dental surgeon for 12 years. And then one day I said, okay, I'm going to leave everything and start discovering Lebanon, my country before traveling abroad. So 4,000 videos on YouTube after uh, covering all across Lebanon, uh, probably 90% yeah. of the villages, uh, showing my country to the world and, and uh, publishing everything on YouTube and showing the world Lebanon as not seen on TV, as I like to call it. Uh, it was time to go travel the world and meet success stories across the globe. It's definitely tourism in a part, food mm. in a part, uh, where to go, how to go, and what to do in a part. But most importantly is uh, the heroes out there, is the success stories around the world, is talking with expats, meeting people, empowering people, reuniting the Arab culture all across the globe and reminding every single person that has traveled abroad that where are your origins and how can we unite all together, work together, eat from each other, meet each other every weekend uh, uh, to, um, to um, how would I say, show our culture to the world and never forget Danny, our roots. Uh, um, you, you are doing such a, an interesting work. You're not just going and tasting like you're saying. You're not just traveling and showing and things. There's actually a deeper meaning with what you're trying to do, a like you're saying, a unifying, a Arabic countries. The you are unifying the Arabic countries. Have have you seen um, benefits of this? Um, people coming together, or even have you met political um, figures or people who are in higher power who are, are seeing the work that you're saying and they're going. We like him. He's doing good. We're going to work with you to try and I don't know unify the countries even more. Like I, how the benefits of what you're doing is it really showing? It's beautifully working. What I do is a mission. Is a mission uh, for our for history. Is a mission for our kids. Is a mission that's ongoing slowly, a bit mm -hmm. it bit by bit, and um, it's indirectly uh, building up. Um, I can recall from from what I see and people that probably two, three million people have visited Lebanon since I started, or probably even more, up to five million people have visited their homeland after I started because they never planned, even planned to. I can tell you that all my views of uh, Iraq's episode were viewed by Iraqi expats that have left their country for more than 20 years mm -hmm. and which I meet again and again all across the globe reconnecting with the roots or their country, which they've forgotten about and cannot see since the news only mm. tells you bad things. Uh, so it's building up, shui, shui, uh, a bit at a time, more investment into uh, 
let's talk about Lebanon. Into Lebanon, uh, more people coming back to their roots, more people seeing the real truth and the ground and, and uh, the happy families and the villages and probably planning. And mm. I, I met hundreds the last trip in Australia or in, or in Canada that are coming back to, to re, recheck and reconnect mm. with, their, uh, with their country. And yes, it is uh, a very noble, very humbly mm. cause, I would say. Um, and hopefully uh, it will see a brighter future. يعني ال الحديث مع ال مع الناس اللي you اللي تشوفهم the the conversations that you're having with the people that you're meeting must be so beautiful because they look at you and they go you've been to my place some people have never been back you're saying do you think um a do you think you'll go back to live in Lebanon? You live I in Lebanon. Lebanon. Oh, okay. So you're based in Lebanon now. Always. Never okay. been out of Lebanon. My family is in Lebanon. Wow. I live in Lebanon. This is my land. I love it. Okay. I cherish it. I enjoy it. So I, 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 I think people thought that you lived overseas at some point, but maybe that's, maybe you can just clarify that for me. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, I'm loved all across the globe. So when I'm in Australia, people love me and I film in Australia as if yeah. I live in Australia. When I go to Canada, uh, people ask me, where's your family? Why why yeah. aren't they around you? Aren't they here? I say, no, they're in Lebanon. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, again, I'm super loved by people and welcomed uh, like a king. Um, and uh, the difference between what I do, my YouTube channels and probably others is that I have a video being published every single day at 9 p.m. So now I have uh, to go in a bit because I have the videos of 9 p.m. that I need to publish. So people follow my steps all across Lebanon and the globe every single day at 9 p.m. Uh, my world tour has started on the 5th of October. I've been to Cyprus, to France, to the UAE, to Canada, to Australia. Uh, now coming back to Lebanon to see the kids for two days and then going to Belgium and uh, Paris again. Um, and when this ends during uh, Christmas, I'll take a break. I spend quality time with my family in Lebanon again, and then restart in January because plans for 2023 are huge. Um, so I'm promoting Lebanon based in Lebanon. Yeah. I'm not uh, preaching for yeah. Lebanon. I, I left. So I'm, yeah. I'm in Lebanon and preaching Lebanon. Yeah. And from Lebanon, I'm going back to Iraq in Jan, in Feb, in March, in April uh, to try to discover more. And probably along the way, I have plans for Jordan and I should visit UAE because I have a couple of things I have to do there and uh, some, some success stories I have to do. While the United States uh, didn't see me yet because there are thousands, hundreds of thousands mm -hmm. of Lebanese out there. And in Canada, uh, I couldn't finish uh, all my visits, so I have to go back. And I'm loving Australia, so probably mid, mid, mid year. And this is how things build up while yeah. in Lebanon. I have uh, the villages to continue and visit uh, and people to, to show, to see, and definitely empower the new factories opening and empower export and show that uh, the country is still uh, working. So uh, working how has the stay in Australia been for you? Whereabouts are you at the moment? What are you, where have you been, what have you been tasting? I've been in uh, Sydney for the last two weeks uh, and now in, in Melbourne. Uh, Sydney was beautiful beautiful amazing uh, the love i felt the, the welcoming uh, it was phenomenal uh, the events that have been made for me or the events the events i've been invited to and then now in melbourne for the week i have a surprise visit to then to uh, tasmania and then going back to sydney for more work and leaving to lebanon on the 8th when you go to a country, do you tell people in advance? Do, how does that work when you're planning? I mean, this is more like a technical thing because I'm very curious. I think people are curious. How do you decide where to go? And how does that work when you land? Like, who, like how do you know who you meet and where to go and all that? Like, do you have an itinerary pre-planned? Uh, it depends. Some countries I prepare, sometimes some countries mm. I don't. But, again, but alhamdulillah, for the love of people, all I have to do is put a story on yeah. Instagram and say, guys, I'm yeah. coming your way. And uh, and I'll have to choose out of 100 people who wants to uh, grab me from the airport. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the love of the love of people is, is, is phenomenal. I, yeah. I can't thank them enough. And I start my days and finish my days mm. every single morning. 
uh, or night saying thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Sorry for not replying to you. Sorry for not seeing your message. Sorry for not visiting you. Um, the love you're giving me makes me feel home wherever I am across the globe. And probably this is uh, why many do not know where I live uh, because I show every mm -hmm. land I visit as if it is my home. And out of all these 100 people who want to pick you up from the airport, <laughs> the people who get to choose to or get to have you in, sitting in their car on the way to your hotel or whatever, they must feel so happy and just so blessed that you're able to come to their city and come to their country. So I'm sure people are asking themselves now, what about New Zealand? I should be visiting New Zealand. I should be. The problem is that when you reach Australia, they do not let you leave anywhere anymore. So you say, okay, the land next door. So let me go. Uh, and uh, every time the first visit was, was 12 days extended to 20. I had to leave before of COVID because of COVID. This visit is 21. I cannot extend. Uh, probably the next one would be a month and, um, planned differently to see more cities and, uh, to, to have more condensed work and. New Zealand will be. You will tell us in advance, I hope. And I think you'll have 500 people put their hand up to come and pick you up from the airport <laughs> with food, with Salud. food in their Salud. cars Salud. ready to feed you <laughs> and take you to all the places. Um, yeah, Salud. of course. Um, I think New Zealand is underrated. So um, it's a fabulous place. And people will be so happy to have you. Um, I just want to know what have you learned from all of this experiences, 10 years of traveling? And, and eating and tasting. Happiness is a choice. This is one. Two, always look at the glass half full and not the glass half empty. Three, uh, connect with people and keep your smile. Four, never forget who you are and who made you and how, where'd you come from to become who you are today. So never forget your, uh, your roots. Uh, six, never open a business because it's a business if you do not have the passion for it, because I can taste the passion behind the food. I can taste love and not mm -hmm. business. And this is way mm -hmm. too important. Uh, give people your culture and how you eat things and do not adapt to them just to fill up your pockets with money. And I can continue on going and going. It's, a, it's an endless ongoing uh, yeah. curve of learning that I try to, to give back to all my viewers. Um, my videos are not about eating again. My videos are about, are about learning, about uh, mm -hmm. stories, about uh, emotions, about tears, about how to eat, what to do, how to cook, um, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, and again, love of people is a, is a blessing and, mm -hmm. and thanks God. My videos are being uh, viewed in many, many, many universities and schools mm -hmm. all across the globe for uh, Lebanese and Arabic speaking uh, mm. uh, students. And um, here comes the challenge uh, to mm. give more, to teach more, uh, to fill more. Uh, while mm. food, in Arabic, mm. food is the international language of unity and happiness, where food unites us. Beautifully said. Um, what's your message like to the people out there who haven't watched your work or just in general, like, what do you want to say to the people that's coming out of your heart that um, it's like a message? Very simply, be proud of uh, who you are. Very simply, mm. be proud of who you are. And uh, and give uh, give time to support your community. Probably in our uh, our blood, we, we tend to not support mm. each other much. And uh, so you would go for, you go, go searching for better. You would probably say English is sexier or you would say, oh, this, this uh, international blogger has millions of followers. Probably I'll watch him, not uh, someone from my community. So mm -hmm. support each other. If you don't know me, mm -hmm. watch what I do, understand what I do without saying, oh, I'm just looking at the outlet or he uh, Come on, uh, uh, be deeper and more mature than that. Uh, and definitely will learn something uh, and and in a way just by liking recognize my very how can work. people support you simply by subscribing joining that would be enough for me for now um, and uh, and it will push me to continue and continue that very hard very 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 hard journey which I yeah. really really enjoy I never considered yeah. it as a job 
every single morning I wake up feeling blessed. I sleep feeling blessed. Now I'm going to a dinner of 150 people waiting for me uh, to recognize me, to thank me, to support me, to love me, to take pictures with me. And that would make me wake up tomorrow morning with a better and uh, more That's effort. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for your time. How can people find you What if they want to watch you? Yeah. It's very simple, easy, no yeah. garlic, no onions. Why don't you say, bala tum, bala basal? How does this <laughs> one eat food? Fine. Just subscribe and eat it the way you want. I it's can't no believe you don't onions. have, you don't eat garlic. That's like, Keith. Anyway, that's for another episode. <laughs> Thank you so much for making time for us, uh, Anthony, for and all the best to you for future endeavors. Thank you so much for. Uh, watching and listening to this week's episode on the Mina I'm So show and the podcast. Um, if you enjoyed it, please leave a like or a subscribe um, choice. If you loved it, please subscribe. If you liked it, like the video to tell me that you are enjoying these things, these videos that I'm making. So I appreciate it so much that you are um, watching and listening and viewing. This is the last episode for 2022 and the last episode for season six of my show i have been on such a great journey bringing you these um fabulous stories of iraqi people and to end it obviously spoken to anthony who is lebanese born but yet still middle eastern who had such a great story to tell about the work that he's doing around the world especially in the arab world showcasing the wonderful food and cuisine that the Arab world is showing. And I think hopefully that was a fabulous ending. I have been wanting to see him and talk to him for so long. So it's, I was a little bit awestruck. Anyway, safe travels, happy, um, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And I'm so thankful for all your support, for your wonderful love throughout the year. All I'm going to say is kakite and we'll see you later.